Okay, so this is Unit 1, Careers in Psychology. Um, most of the information can be found in the Myers textbook, page 12 to 15. And you should be taking notes in your note packet on page 10 to page 12. And anytime I recommend you stop, pause, where you do need to take notes, um, it is important that you do know all the information that is found on the next two slides for Unit 1. Okay, so let's start with basic versus applied research in psychology. If you're interested in studying psychology, there's two different fields that you can be um, a part of. First is the basic research. Basic research researches um, people and things just for the sake of science. Um, science for the sake of science. They are exploring, they are researching, they're finding out information to make things better. They do research to explore the field in general. Most psychologists, in fact, do basic research. I will flip forward to the next slide to show you some jobs that you could potentially have. They research things like development and education. They research things like the brain. Um, so those are some of the fields which we will get to in a moment in basic research. The other one is applied research. Once they have explored the basic research part of it, then they actually go about and researchers apply it to the field of psychology. This is um, practical everyday use. These are things like once they figure out um, how to help people in basic research, they will then go and use that in order to help individuals in the applied stage. So let's take a look at the different types of psychologists that you can be that fall under basic psychologists. The first one here is biological. Biological has to do with the body. Um, it explores links between the brain and the mind. These are people that are looking at depression, what different parts of the body, particularly the brain, would cause one to become depressed. What are they lacking? You also have here neuropsychologists, very similar. Biological particularly looks at the whole body um, and tries to find you know, what is causing maybe a certain person to behave this way. And particularly, you might also look at the brain. But to be more specific, neuropsychologists are more specific and just particularly look at the brain and why somebody might um, behave a certain way. A big field that's popular right now is they're studying the field of um, football and how football may cause more and more people, um, when they have concussions, more and more people could be um, becoming depressed. So neuropsychologists would study you know, how many concussions would cause a pers certain person to have deterioration in the brain, which would cause a, a certain person to behave in a certain way. Jumping back up here to developmental psychologists. Developmental psychologists are going to study the growth of an individual from birth to death. They're going to look at what stages of development should, you know, what, what we should we be doing at certain ages? Um, and uh, when should we be beginning to talk, walk? Um, what parts of our body are going to begin to deteriorate at certain times? What causes people to have memory loss? Another field is educational psychology. This studies the impact of teaching and learning at various schools. These are not the teachers. This is not a teacher in the field. It's not me that's teaching you. It is more studying the educational system. What time of day should we be going to school? What type of test should we be giving? So that is the field of educational psychology. Cognitive psychologists. Cognitive psychologists really explore and research how people think, understand, and problem solve. At what, um, how can we go about solving a problem? Um, what causes people to remember certain things and certain tasks? So that's cognitive psychology. Personality psychologists really study and investigate what traits are persistent. Um, what are the different traits? Do we have a specific number of traits? Are they dominant in one um, gender over another? So those are personality psychologists. And a personality trait would be something um, like they are very organized. Another personality trait would be something like they are very outgoing. Social psychology 
social psychologists would be something that explores the way people influence one another. So they're looking at an individual in a social setting. Um, this would be studying uh, the impact of social media on society. Experimental psychology in general, um, they might help design the research experiments. They might um, set up experiments and they are the people um, that really kind of conduct a lot of the research in terms of experimentation. Psychometrics, studying psychometrics studies the measurement of our abilities, uh, attitudes, and traits. They might a lot of the times help also design the tests that individuals will take. So if you're taking a personality test, they might help design that test as well. The bottom one um, is engineering psychologists. It is not on your list, but you might want to add it. Engineering psychologists help develop the tools, the products, and the technology that we use to research individuals. So if you're taking a memory test um, to see how fast or how many terms you can remember, they might actually um, design that equipment that you're going to be using for that test. Moving on to applied psychologists. Again, we spoke before, applied psychologists, once the researchers have found out you know, the best time to start school or the best way to test students or does PowerPoint work or do voiceovers on PowerPoints work, they, they might then go and share that information. Another one is counseling. Um, if they found out that this is the best way to approach a child who has been abused, um, the counselor is then going to go use that information and try and help that individual. So uh, the different types of psychologists in this field would be one is industrial psychologist. This is the one that I've seen over and over again on a lot of the AP tests. Industrial psychologists are, they study and advise um, the workplace, studies and advises um, on behavior in a workplace. If there is a company that over and over again is losing business and has lost a lot of um, a lot of clients, they might go into the workplace and try and develop a more um, a more positive environment. They might try and motivate their employees. Um, this also looks at when is the best time to sell a product. They might explore that the best time to sell di um, to have a diaper commercial would be maybe during the day when there's a lot of people up uh, watching TV. Um, working with their children. The best time to maybe sell a certain type of candy product would probably be, you know, after school because that's when the kids are going to be watching TV. So industrial psychologists also look at the industry and when to market and sell a product. Human factor psychologists, there's more information in the back of the text on this one, but it explores the interaction of people and the machines and the world in general and how we interact. Um, what are different types of products we're using, um, and how are they affecting us, how are they interacting with us, how are cell phones interacting with us, how are computers making us different people. Um, you know, there's different, uh, they say that our brains are developing different now because we're thinking differently versus when maybe they used to use pens and papers, and they're looking at that aspect of it. Not researching so much, but um, exploring just in general how we're interacting with it. Counseling. Counseling is probably one you're more familiar with. Um, counselors are people who help cope, individuals cope with challenges and crisis in their lives. This can be something from school, to their jobs, to their marriage, to their family. They often work to improve um, personal, personal and social functioning. So if you have a small problem or a crisis or somebody experienced something as tragic as Sandy Hook, there might be a counselor on the scene. Um, that is there to offer advice and give a, help individuals cope with that setting. We also have academic counselors here at school. Um, you may go to Ms. Muldoon to help you select your classes and your courses for next year, or Mr. Novotny. These are counselors that are in the building helping you guys make your career choices for the future. Clinical psychologists are more, um, they work with heavy cases of student, maybe a student or an adult who is over, has maybe depression, and it's, um, it's a long, it's going on for a, a long period of time, and you need to go and seek additional help outside of the classroom setting, outside of your workplace, um, to get more in-depth therapy, talk therapy. You've probably seen a lot of TV shows that talk with clinical psychologists um, that work one-on-one -on -one to help um, your emotional or behavior um, problems. 
health psychologists work with individuals to uh, overcome health problems. So if you have a problem where you're continuously, it could be something as simple as you're trying to quit smoking or you're trying to set up a better health plan for an individual to um, eat better. This can be a health psychologist that will help you organize uh, that portion of your life. Forensic psychologists, a lot of students will have interest in forensic psychologists. Um, these are applied to um, psychological issues, to legal matters. So if, we, if there's a person in the case that saw a crime, but it was based off of eyewitness testimony, and they saw that person, and they saw that person, a forensic psychologist might come to the court case and explain how our memory actually works. So they apply a lot of our psychological stuff to legal matters in court cases. School psychologists, school psychologists, again, these are psychologists that can be found um, that help out in schools and work with students, not so much on their academic performance, but more of their personal needs. Um, we do have a set of school psychologists here um, that does work with students one-on-one -on -one if uh, the case arises. And then last but not least, we have sports psychologists. Sports psychologists help athletes. So this is a growing field. Um, they work with athletes and teams to maximize their personal performance. A lot of professional athletes have a lot of stress on them. They have to win the Super Bowl or they have to um, you know, win the World Series. So a lot of times psychologists are brought to the scene or brought to, um, into the, into the, to the team and they work on stress and they work on managing their fears. Um, it is, like I said, it is a growing field and hopefully Jay Cutler will have one um, that he's working with for the game on this upcoming week. Last but not least, I just want to point out the difference between a clinical psychologist and psychiatry, or a psychologist, um, or psychiatrist, sorry. Um, clinical psychologist uh, studies and assesses and treats troubled people with psychotherapy. So we have this lady and this gentleman on the couch over here. This would be more of a clinical psychologist. Again, they cannot prescribe drugs. They just work with you one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of them use talk. They discuss what maybe is going on. Um, then you have the psychiatrists, our medical professionals, their MDs, who use treatments like drugs and psychotherapy to treat psychological diseased patients. So if you do are treated with depression, you can go to a, a clinical psychologist that will work with your work with you to discuss your issues. However, if they're going to prescribe drugs, you do have to come to, you do have to go see a psychiatrist, um, which does get it, uh, you do have to go to med school um, and to receive that license. Again, this is the end of careers in psychology. Um, I will see you in class.